at WrestleMania 4, 1988, he participated in the tournament for the vacant heavyweight championship of the world. So, why was there a tournament for the title? Instead of Hulk simply dropping the belt to, say, Ted DiBiase, or hell, even doing the face versus face warrior thing with Randy first, the more believable storyline was Ted DiBiase buying Andre's contract to fight for the title so he could win the belt to sell it to Ted, who paid someone to get plastic surgery to look like Dave Hebner, bought them a little ref costume, snuck them into a WWE event to fast count Hogan for Andre so Andre could give the belt to Ted, but then Jack Tony said the belt can't change hands that way, so we have to have a tournament for the belt, brother. Listen, fuck you. Uh, this was a great fucking story. Um, and also, too, Hulk Hogan's red hot. You don't want to fucking kill the, the golden goose. So you got to come up with some creative shit. And, you know, plastic surgery was, was hot in the 80s. And <laughs> dumb rednecks like me didn't understand that and believe that because, you know, it's a male soap opera. We see it on soap operas all the time, so we can believe that. And the fact that you have the Hepners who do fucking look alike at this time, you believe it. It's... A crazy fucking story, but it works in professional wrestling. It gets us uh, a means to an end. And then ultimately, you know, we get to the tournament, which Macho Man wins and leads to him becoming the next big baby face and then leads to the mega powers exploding into the WrestleMania main event, which great fucking story. I'm the I'm the champion. I think you're trying to steal my lady. And then he becomes the big bad guy. I, listen, it's been discussed many a times on many different podcasts. It's, it's a great professional wrestling story. It is truly why people call professional wrestling a male soap opera because plastic surgery of an evil twin is involved. That's why. And that's where we are right now. And we already know Macho can deliver in a tournament. He did the wrestling classic. It's been proven. It made Vince believe that he could be a top guy. So let's bring that whole idea back again. We're going to get Andre versus Hulk in there, and that's going to sell tickets also. Once again, it's a, it's a rematch there. Where that's going to draw a lot of eyeballs. And then once those two are out, there's going to be a lot of questions like, who's going to win this fucking tournament now? We don't know what's going to happen, which leaves question, which creates drama. So, you know, if Hulk can't win it, then we're glad the Macho Man won it. If I had to bet money, I would probably say that this is. Something that definitely started with Hulk Hogan saying, putting somebody over clean doesn't work for me, brother. Let's try to work something else <laughs> out. And Vince McMahon on a cocaine bender just kind of talked for a while. I disagree. I think this is where he learned it. Mm, okay, fair, uh... fair. I, I think this is where he might have been like, I'm willing to do business, brother. And then Vince's like, you absolutely cannot do that. It's absolutely not. And then that planted mm. the seed, which grew the tree inside of Hulk Hogan's mind that the tree of that doesn't work for me brother the idea of like there's a always a creative finish or there's always a creative story to tell to avoid my shoulders being pinned to the mat this is the origin story 